Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah. 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 I have no idea what we're going to talk about this week. <laughs> yeah. It has cool. been a seriously it's... slow news week. Oh, has it? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that, right? Yeah. There's not a whole lot going. The world's just kind of plugging along, and nothing's really happening in yeah. it, right? <laughs> boring place i don't know how how you survive with a podcast these days <laughs> yeah right um but uh well i guess there's hmm it's hot it's still hot dude it's hot <laughs> it's always hot we live in south it's amazing how hot it is actually i, I don't even know I, all right are, are you buying into global warming now Oh, no, 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 no. Because <laughs> it was not... like this last year and the year before and the year before. <laughs> I, I, I recognize where I live and accept the fact that it's just going to be hot forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we get a few months of cool weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most, most years? Some years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always rooting for that cool weather to kill the mosquitoes. Yeah. No kidding. So. Um, it hasn't, it seems to me it hasn't rained as much this summer so far as it usually. Well, and I was going to say, it doesn't seem like the mosquitoes have been so bad this year, but it's I too, actually maybe it's too wonder, hot for them too. I was going to say, I wonder if it's too hot for the mosquitoes. Uh, like I didn't know that was a thing, but I don't think it is. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's not. I'm pretty sure it's not either. We but. did have, um, like a so, week of 17 degrees though, this last winter. So. And I'm wondering if that's not what it is because I always root for those weeks in the winter time. Cause I'm mm-hmm. like, man, like maybe that'll make a, a light mosquito year. Yeah. And so far it seems like it has at yeah. least where I'm at in Roberts though. Like I say, I don't know. Well, it's certainly worse there than it is here. It normally is like normally I can't even get outside in the evening times and yeah. really do stuff because I'm like fighting them. Like it, it's hot. So I gotta like, I want to wear less clothes but I want to wear more clothes because I don't want the mosquitoes on me. Yeah. So it's it's tough. You don't use the sprays? I try not to. I will use them. I try not to use them when I'm at the house, though. Mm. But like if we go on like a camping trip or if I know I'm going to be in the woods a bunch, I will use them then. Yeah. I'm not like a big fan either. of that stuff. Like You're I don't, my skin. That, and it just makes me feel greasy. And <laughs> I, don't know, I don't like it. Um, you were agreeing with my cousin online. What was, the, what was she promoting? The... I mean, she wasn't promoting, but she was something over something. Um, It was whatever kind of bug spray brand that you use. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember now. You don't know what kind of bug spray brand you use? Well, oh, um, I think I usually use Cutter. Yeah, that's what it was. That's yeah. exactly what it was. She was yeah. like cut her over whatever the Oh yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for real though. Like, yeah. Cuz um, dude, some <clears throat> of that stuff sucks, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't I, I can't I, obviously I can't identify bug spray band <laughs> brands, so Yeah. No, no cutters what's up. Excuse me. Well, um there there is the RNC. So yeah, so I've been watching that. Um I have not. Really? I, yeah. I find I find those things to be uninformative. Oh, generally. they are. And that's that's kind of what's entertaining about watching it is just kind of how well, and I like to watch it because I I try I like to go to our LP conventions and kind of just see the contrast between what we do versus what they do, mm-hmm. um, and it, it is interesting to me because like it's all just like a, a really crappy TV show for the RNC, yeah, like it's like a bunch of people are up there making speeches and like just. Well, that's that's an unfair comparison because the LP convention is like a really crappy high school play. <laughs> okay. Comparatively. Yeah. I mean, like if that's the if that's the baseline, if a really crappy TV show is the RNC, then the yeah, <laughs> maybe high school, maybe middle school, maybe middle school. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably fair. The production um, values are not quite the same. Yeah, we don't have the yeah. same kind of money to spend. Yeah. Well, I mean, the production value is definitely there for the RNC. Yeah. But but the content is where it seems to be lacking as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it is interesting. Like uh, like I, some um, lady that was speaking last night, I don't know who she was. She was somebody. Um, but, but it just struck me listening to her because 
some of the stuff that comes up, it's just like, man, like what world are we living in? Because she's talking about like uh, the one that struck me was, and we're going to make sure that, that girls play in girl sports and don't have men playing with girls and that sort of thing. It's like, what world are we living in? That And she's like, like, like serious about it. And she's not wrong. Like, cause I mean, that's, a thing that's out there, you know? Yeah. But it's like, man, like we're living in a crazy, crazy time. This is a weird timeline. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I find those events to essentially be like one great big campaign rally. And that's all of, that's all of it is like, um, it, it's like a pep rally. Actually. It's like, it's worse than a campaign rally. It's because well, they, so, they all know who they're voting for. It's a, it's a pep rally. It, it really is. Um, and it, I almost want to, con- it's almost like whatever the opposite of a roast is. Yeah. It's that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was hey, thinking. geography. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching it last night. I was like, man. And like, they were making a big deal because Trump got there early last night and like came out and made his walk and went up to his little area and whatever. I was like, yeah, I bet he did get there early. He's eating this up. Yeah, this oh, is, yeah. this is nothing but people just going, walking Trump. up on stage and talking about how wonderful Donald Trump is. Like yeah. he loves this. Like, I, I don't know, but, but it does have that feel to it of just like this, like pep rally, like, mm-hmm. you know, anoint the king. Yeah. Uh, how's the king looking? Ah, uh, he seemed all right. I mean, he's always oh, getting around great. And I mean, he's got the little, um, pillow on his ear, you know, yeah. it looks like a tiny little pillow. <laughs> well, that was news, I suppose. Oh yeah. Then there was that, that happened. Yeah. yeah. That was the thing that happened. So, um, so what are your thoughts on all of that? Uh, you got to be more specific. I got a lot of thoughts on a lot of different aspects of it. Um, I mean, just broad strokes generally. Uh, okay. Broad strokes generally. Um, they, the <laughs> Trump is assured of the presidency if he survives to it. Yeah. At, at this point, I will say, um, for him that I can't like, it's not, I'm not a, I'm not a fan. I I think that that's been clear on this podcast. I've defended him when he deserved it and I've attacked him when he deserved it. The way Um, I've described it to people is I'm just kind of indifferent about the guy. Yeah. Like I'm not, he's funny. Yeah. I, I enjoy, (laughs) I I enjoyed his time in the white house entertainment wise. Mm -hmm. Um, more so than Biden. (laughs) I mean, Biden's funny. It's just not ha ha. (laughs) Well, and when it comes down to that, uh, okay, let me, let me tell a different story and then I'll All right. hopefully this will express kind of where I am on the whole thing. All right. Um, I was talking to a friend into last week about the Ukraine stuff. Yeah. And my friend was adamant that Putin said that once he's done with Ukraine, he's going to go after Poland and NATO and he wants to rebuild the Soviet union. The domino and, theory. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, oh, okay, I tell you what, go find that quote. <laughs> yeah. Go find it. Everything, every uh, speech that, that Putin has ever given is available on the Kremlin website. Go to the Kremlin website. They translate it to English for you. There yep. are English translations there. Yep. Go to that website or go to Sputnik or go to wherever. You can get, there's a lot of places you can go to get translations of Putin's speeches. Go wherever you want to go and you find me that quote. Yeah, I'd like I to challenge hear it. you. Yeah. I challenge you to go find me that quote. Yeah. Because you won't. Yeah. Because it doesn't exist. He's never said this. Yeah. He's never said now Biden has said that he's said this a bunch of times. Yes, he and has. Somebody else, might have been you, uh, said something to me about uh like, you know, the concern there is that he might believe that. <laughs> it, it, yeah, right. it might not be <laughs> and that's really scary and it, I hadn't thought of that before. Yeah. And that scares me too. But anyway, back to this story. I, I just said, I challenge you to go find that quote. Yeah. And you can spend as, you can take as much time as you want because yeah. you will never find it. Yeah. Because it doesn't exist. He never said that. I said, Biden is a fool and a liar. Yeah. And his response to me was, well, what about Trump? I said, well, Trump is a fool and a liar too. These things are not mutually exclusive. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like I'm a libertarian. I don't have a dog in this hunt. Yeah. Exactly. I don't like any of them. <laughs> I'm just calling balls and strikes, <laughs> yeah, man. Exactly. So that, you know, that's my feelings. But when it comes right down to it, 
policy wise, on the whole, the things that are important to me, I'd rather have Trump in there than Biden. Yeah. Um, I'd rather neither one of them. Well, yeah, but, I'd, r- I'd rather have a and true... In, in fact, at this point, I think I'm probably going to vote for RFKJ. Yeah. Uh, there's plenty of time between now and election time. I might change that. Yeah. And I, since since that kind of vote, especially here, will not matter one bit. If yeah. I vote for anybody but Trump, it's a it's a wasted vote in a sense. Yeah. Um, in that it won't contribute to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, here, because it... Yeah, you Trump's know. winning Alabama, guys. I don't know. The spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the, Trump will get three quarters of the vote here in this county. Yeah. Like, Republicans will get three quarters of, of the vote in every office in this county. Yeah. But, so I may end up voting for Chase just to put another vote into the libertarian pile since it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I hate to say that it doesn't matter because I, I you know, I, I do still maintain that a wasted vote is a vote for somebody that I don't believe in. Yeah. But I don't really believe in Chase, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so I, I think that if I'm going to vote for somebody that I don't fully back, RFKJ is probably my better vote. Yeah. Because, I mean, who knows? Crazy things can happen. Yeah. So, but I think that the assassination attempt just assured Trump's victory if he survives to the election. Because no matter what you have to say about the guy, you cannot deny that his reaction, the immediate aftermath of the assassination attempt, he was badass. Well, and this is something I've always been on the fence with him as far as that aspect, because he tries to put on that persona of that he's the big bad guy and Mm -hmm. that he's so tough and like he surrounds himself with tough people. But I've been around people like that all my life. And sometimes it's legit. Sometimes when the chips are down, that person stand and like, okay, that person's been putting on that persona and that is who they are. Yeah. And then so more often of the time, it turns out they're just weak. And it would have been very easy for Trump to have, when, I, when, when the Secret Service surrounded him the way they did, for him to have shuffled off and went yeah, and left. crawled off stage. Crawled off and, stage. Yeah. And honestly, nobody would have thought much about it. It, nope. would have been, it would have been like, all right, you know, I mean, he just like, got <laughs> shot at, you know, like, I mean, who yeah. knows if there's another shooter, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that ain't who Trump is. And this this instance showed that like like he's the badass that he pretends to be yeah. like that's that is who he is because and you don't ever really know that about a person until you see him in a situation like what he was in there yeah um, and well, that goes a long way with me honestly it does I, I I agree he he showed real courage or stupidity I mean sometimes it's hard to tell the difference but, exactly <laughs> you know, he he showed what came off as real courage. And I, I thought like all the other things that I think about Donald Trump, the kind of guy that would do that is the kind of guy that you want to be president. Yes. Well, and that's the guy you want in those rooms with foreign leaders and, mm-hmm. and, and doing business for the country. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, we're libertarians. We're not big on government, but if you're going to have somebody out there representing the government, mm-hmm. it needs to be somebody like that. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's Who's just not backing down. Yeah. Oh yeah. And believe me, after uh, well, I say that actually there are situations where I wish that our government would back down. <laughs> well, but, yeah. I mean, but uh, you know, the kind of person that's going to, that's going to stand up and fight. Yeah, absolutely. Just like he said. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah. So it was, and if nothing else, like you want to start talking about the significance of iconography that, um, AP photographer, Trump ought to hire <laughs> yeah, right. put on his own payroll. That AP photographer that took the one with him with his fist up and the American flag behind him and the blood trickling down his oh, cheek yeah. and so that, forth. That like, shot is everywhere, by the way, at the RNC. They got it on shirts, on well, they pins. Should. Oh, yeah. They should. That is that is going to be one of the most important pictures in the history of this country. Yeah. I, I agree. It, it sounds ridiculous. It sounds well because when because I say we're that, living but. in the moment now. We you don't realize how significant something is until later. And I think you're right. Like we, this was a significant moment in history, mm-hmm. um, and and that that picture encapsulates it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a um, it's a you know Washington crossing the Delaware kind of. It re- picture it, it, it really is um <laughs> and that sound i know it sounds hyperbolic but it's uh the 
you can't underestimate the importance of iconography and that looked like the picture that I think most people want America to represent. Yeah. Yeah. Really from both sides of the aisle. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, it just, it, it does. Um, and something else that this has done is it's, is at least in the media, like, and I didn't really want to talk about them next. So go. Okay. So it's crazy to me because so ever since Trump came down the escalator, they've done everything they can to dehumanize him. Mm-hmm. The left has. Yeah. Um, and like that's gone now. Like it's. Uh, mm, I, I don't know. I, I think there were a couple of days where Biden was like pulling some of that. Well, they all rhetoric yeah. out of his speeches and so forth. But yeah, he's it's gone back to campaign time. Like, yeah. But th- you're talking about uh, the politicians. I'm talking about in the eyes of the people. Uh, like. I just I, I don't think that you can un unwind that. Like I mean, you you've seen the different this side of him that everybody has seen now. Yeah, I think it matters. Yeah, I, no, I agree with that. What I have been looking for in the media and have not seen, yeah, um, is the where they start blaming the uh, violent political re- rhetoric from the left. Yeah, for resulting in this assassination attempt because yeah. anytime there's a shooting. Yeah. Anywhere. And in fact, for the last eight years, anytime there's a shooting anywhere where a black person or a brown person was killed, yeah, it was Trump's fault. Yeah. <laughs> according to the media. Yeah, that's true. But now, apparently, you can't make a connection that, between that logic what doesn't people work say the other way. Yeah. And the actions of other people. Now, and to be explicit here, I don't think that that's correct. I mean, yeah. I don't approve of. Uh, of drawing a line between somebody's words and somebody else's actions. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I think that that's BS to begin with. Yeah. But their rules have said that that's perfectly legitimate right up till now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that kind of hypocrisy bothers me. Yeah. So, I mean, they have been saying for a long time, I mean, hell, Biden in a speech the day before said that Trump was the greatest threat to this nation or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in fact, that's something that he's been saying. Um, they have been saying that Trump cannot be permitted to gain the presidency, that this is the end of the de- end of democracy if he wins the presidency. <laughs> yeah. We'll never have another election again, even <laughs> though we had an election after he lost an election, and we're having another... Anyway. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> So uh, even the the point of it is ridiculous. But here's the other part of that is that if if they really believed that this was, you know, the reincarnation of Hitler or whatever, like they claim that he's going to bring fascism to America. And um, if he's elected again, it's going to be a dictatorial fascist state from here on forward. Then I think that it would be like justifiable for them to try and have him assassinated or to have their own January 6th moment. If he won the election to prevent his installation as the president. So if they really believe all that stuff that they've been saying all this time, all this rhetoric, do you see, well, do you think we'll see a a Democrat January 6th (laughs) when he's elected president this time? Uh, Do you think they're going to try and stop the, the peaceful transfer of power to this man? Who's then going to never give it up. Yeah. It's, I tell you, man, we're in for a wild ride here. Yeah. Well, I mean, my concern is that I think that you will see some of that. Yeah, no, um, I agree. I, but I, I think that the politicians don't actually believe that. That's just something that they're saying so that to try and get people riled up on their side. Yeah. Um, there's no way that you can look at Trump's first term and the way he's been and actually believe that. Yeah. The guy is not so much of a radical as they make him out to be. No, he's really not. Yeah. Um, um, now, as far as the actual event uh, is concerned, I mean, I, well, I mean, I keep coming back to um, Hanlon's razor. Okay. You familiar, the, you're I'm familiar not. with the phrase, I'm, I'm sure. The, the phrase is essentially... Um, never attribute to malice what can be explained with incompetence. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that that's the situation. I'm, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> ruling out the conspiracies, Yeah. but I just don't think it's necessary. 
Yeah. Um, to explain. And there's a whole lot of weird stuff though, definitely that I think should be considered. Yeah. Uh, Trump's regular uh, secret service, um, detail was pulled. Yeah. Uh, before this event, uh, hmm. supposedly to give them a rest. Okay. Yeah. Um, I actually heard, and I couldn't verify this in the, cause I just heard it today and I, I don't know. I don't even know if I could verify it, honestly. Um, but I, I heard that, uh, actually Cheadle pulled his detail to cover the event that she was at with Biden, yeah. um, instead of covering the Trump event. But I, I don't know about that. I don't think yeah. that that's true. I think that that's kind of a BS talking point. Yeah. Um, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me, <laughs> but, um, anyway, my understanding is they pulled his regular secret service detail, uh, to give them a rest. And clearly the detail that he was given is inexperienced. They're green. Yeah. Um, cause there were a whole lot of mistakes. Um, generally you would have either integrated communications with the local and state law enforcement yeah. Um, or you would have a secret service guy embedded in all the, the other units yeah. so that they could, coordinate. that they can coordinate communication through on, you know, on their comms. Yeah. Um, as I understand it, there was no tactical operations center set up by a secret service to coordinate this, which is ridiculous. Um, they didn't have a general, um, kind of safety features like a color of the day. You'll often mm-hmm. see in these, uh, at these events, the secret service guys will have an armband or something. That's a, they'll all have an armband. That's the same Same color. color. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that they announce right before the event. So that, you know, anybody that's not, that looks like a secret service guy, but isn't wearing the right color (laughs) armband. He's not one of us, you know, that kind of thing. Um, obviously there's a lot to say about their setup covering the area. Yeah. They didn't do Um, a good job of that at all. Like right behind that building is this great big water tower that also had a clear line of sight to the stage. They didn't even have anybody on the water tower. Now everybody, everybody knows not just secret service guys that are supposed to be trained in this. (laughs) Everybody knows that if you're going to have a a sniper or counter sniper position, that's where you want to be. You want to be in the highest place that has the best view of the whole area. Yeah. There's nothing better than that water tower. And if they'd had somebody on that water tower, they would have watched that guy crawl across crawl. that roof with that <laughs> rifle. That would have been an easy shot. Oh, yeah. Um, there's, uh, There was, and for those of you that haven't, that haven't been told and heard this, because um, I heard this in a bunch of places, and I thought at the time, like, mm, that seems, I don't know about that. I'm okay. skeptical. Yeah. I'd like to think that we would not have reported it on the podcast if we'd have done it, you know, Monday or whatever. Yeah. Um, but there was a, there was something circulating that, uh, the guy who had taken the shot had been told not to take the shot until afterwards and so forth. But that, that's been totally debunked. That yeah. isn't real. Yeah. Um, so anybody that's hadn't heard that that was totally debunked and isn't real. That was totally debunked. I mean, that came real. across my radar a couple of different times. And, yeah. and when I read it, I read it with high skepticism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Seems but, unlikely. I mean, what, what was laid out made a lot of sense, but it didn't. It just, there was a lot wrong with it, too. Yeah. So. Um, obviously, people saw this guy and were trying to report it to police. So yeah, there's a um, lot of video uh, and interviews of the people that like watch this guy climb up there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, we've all seen the interview with the redhead guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that was I, an entertaining interview, actually. Yeah. Um, the it, it's clear that there was either or both uh, communications or decision making failure. Yeah. Um, that's pretty clear. I, um, <laughs> I'm frustrated particularly with Kimberly Cheadle, who's the director of the secret service. Yeah. Um, but everybody else too, blaming local police. Yeah. Like it's your job to protect the president, not yeah. the local police. But even like, even leaving the secret service part out of it, local police aren't trained for a protective detail. That's not what yeah. they do. And in fact, if you go back and listen to some of our older episodes, you'll know that the police have no responsibility to protect anybody. Exactly. <laughs> so much less the, most important. Except for people that they have in custody, which is, you yeah. know. Um, but so that, you know, the police aren't trained and equipped for, for that kind of protection detail. That yeah. is always the Secret Service's responsibility. Yeah. And 
they should be coordinating the entire effort. And the idea that, well, that building was outside our perimeter, that's just that's just BS. That's that's ass covering is what that is. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's not true. Secret Service is responsible. Ultimately, oh, yeah. Secret Service is responsible. Um, the whole thing about the roof being too sloped. That, that's the one that gets me. That, wow. Like, that, that just is beyond the pale. Like. Yeah, <laughs> especially since the counter sniper teams were on roofs with higher pitch. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that I mean, if, if nothing else, just know that that the idea that it was dangerous for a Secret Service to, guy to be up on that roof because it was such a steep pitch. Just remember that after this guy was shot and killed, yeah, he didn't fall off the roof. <laughs> yeah, he didn't roll down. <laughs> Not only that, yeah, his rifle didn't slide off the roof. Oh wow, yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> says something right there. <laughs> So that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, now, it is crazy to me though because, like, he that's that counter sniper had eyes on him because once those shots were made, he hit his shot mm-hmm. immediately. Yeah, there's um, there's a video uh, showing a counter sniper team that when the shots fire, there's like a flinch and they he pulls up from his scope yeah. and then goes back down. Um, I, th- I don't, it's hard to s- sift through all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that that's not the counter sniper team that killed him. Oh, really? Um, okay. I'm pretty sure that that was the counter sniper team that was behind the stage. Yeah. And there was a tree between them and that roof. Yeah. And, and that makes more sense in that situation because they're, lo- they're hearing communications that there's a guy on the roof. Yeah. They're looking over there but there's a tree obstructing their view. Then they hear shots and he pulls out because he's, you know, pulls up off of his scope. Cause yeah. he's like, I hear this and it's in the right direction, but I don't see, but you don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> where these shots are coming from. And then there was another team to their left to the, if you're facing Trump to the right of the stage, that's yeah. the team that actually killed the guy. Okay. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to piece things together from various bits of information that I'm hearing all over the place too. So, yeah. you know, and I don't know that we'll ever get a real good accounting of what happened. I wouldn't <laughs> expect it. Yeah. Um, one thing though, that I'll say, you know what, actually I'm going to let, I'm going to let Tim Kennedy say this instead. Okay. Um, so we're going to play a clip here. Tim Kennedy is a, um, He's professional MMA guy, uh, but he's also a, a, a special forces sniper or a retired special forces sniper. I think okay. he might still be reserves, but yeah. anyway, um, but he knows this stuff any, <laughs> at, at any rate, yeah. but he, he's his approach to this is what I keep thinking and questions that I keep asking. And so I think it's worth playing what he has to say a, right. about, um, I, I guess about staffing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Department of Homeland Security, Mayorkas, you're fired. Department of Secret Service, uh, what's her name? Kimberly, you're fired. Every single one of those DEI hires in the past three years, you're fired. You don't meet height and weight, you're fired. You can't pass a shooting test, you're fired. You can't do a site survey, you're fired. You didn't know that building three at 151 yards wasn't the highest risk possible and allowed a dude to clamber up and get on top and take a shot at your principal. You're freaking fired, man. Everyone's gone. Gut that whole, and then don't get me started in the FBI or the Department of Justice, who are currently doing the investigation around the opponent to the reigning go- the reigning government, the FBI that just raided President Trump's home armed. They're the ones that are doing the investigation on the assassination of the organization under the Dubai. <laughs> and you guys can't see the video. So at the end there where it sounds like I just cut it wrong or something. <laughs> no, he just threw his hands up exasperatedly and didn't finish the <laughs> sentence. That's what happened. Yeah. Um, well, he's not wrong though. And in another time, that's what would have happened. Like there's a time where like some an incident like this happens. Mm-hmm. These people start resigning Yeah. because that's, that's what should happen. Well, that absolutely. So, uh, Kimberly Cheadle, should have resigned the next morning. Absolutely. No question. And I, and I think Mayorkas should have seriously considered it too. Yeah. Um, but certainly Kimberly Cheadle sh- should have resigned the next morning. And yeah. you know what? She says she's not going to resign. Biden, here's some advice for Biden. Yeah. Fire that woman. 
Yeah. She's responsible for your security detail too. Oh no shit. Yeah, exactly. Right. And if, if she can't get it together, if she can't keep her people in line, if she doesn't have the right staff to do these things, yeah. you should fire her because she's responsible for your security too. Get somebody in there that can do the job. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and the idea that they've got all these DEI um, hires in there is just crazy. And we all yeah. watched the video of him being shuffled off and the people, I'm not a very big guy. Like yeah. my the people my size trying to cover. And it's like, that's the job is just like what he's saying. Like the job is big, burly person. Yeah. It ain't got to be a guy. It can be a big, burly woman. I don't care. But you need to meet the requirements. Yeah. It's just what it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It, man or woman is not really the issue. Size. It looked, it looked like the issue, though, at this event, because right after the shooting, you did have a bunch of guys get up there and cover Donald Trump. Yeah. And you had a Secret Service female agent hiding behind Donald Trump. <laughs> I saw that. And you had a female Secret Service agent hiding behind the edge of the stage. Yeah. And, like, no, but your job is to get between the bullets and the and yeah. the principal. Like, that is the job. <laughs> you know, which is why the roof thing, again, is so stupid. Yeah. Like, the job of these people is to to be willing to give up their life to save their principal. Yeah. But you're worried about falling off a roof? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It like, just makes no on. sense at all. Um, but, yeah, he's right. All, all these people that, that they lowered standards so that they could get a more diverse group, they should all be gone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And his commentary on the FBI, too, like, yeah, this is the same Department of Justice that's investigating. Essentially, they're investigating themselves again. Yeah. I mean, this is a complaint that we've had about government for the entire yeah. run of the podcast. It's like government only in government investigates itself. And when government investigates itself, it never finds that it did anything wrong. No, it always finds that it needs more money. Yeah, that's it. That's like, exactly like that's right. always and guaranteed. That's how the story ends, too. Is yeah. well, we need more money. I, we can do it better if we have the funds. Um, we, yeah, we don't really know much about this shooter at this point. He was in a uh, what was it? Black? What's that company? BlackRock. BlackRock yeah, commercial. I heard that there was a BlackRock connection. But that yeah. that seems like that was just like a side. That, I it, don't think that that means anything. It probably doesn't, but it was it's something that was shooting at but his school. He was just like one yeah, of the guys. But there. it's still odd. It it is, but I, I will, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. not going into that. That doesn't that doesn't put my hackles up nearly as much as that he had almost no social media presence. That's weird. Yeah, twenty year old kid with almost no social media presence. Yeah. Um, you know who doesn't have a social media presence? <laughs> spooks spooks yeah exactly <laughs> um so the, i mean and i'm not i'm not going down these rabbit holes I don't, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really not tinfoily about this no um, i think that this was a guy that like really hated trump uh i i know that he has um that it's come out that he was a registered republican my guess here is that he you know because he also gave money to a couple of uh progressive organizations. Yeah. Um, my guess on the registered Republican thing is that he's one of those guys. And there were a bunch of them in this last, uh, primary election that registered Republicans so they could go vote against Donald Trump. Yeah. Not because they were Republican, but just so that they could go vote against Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, that would be my guess. Of course, I have no basis for that whatsoever, except that he was a registered Republican but gave money to progressive organizations. Yeah. Well, and that we know a lot of that was going on because yeah. it was pretty openly being. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people yeah. were being interviewed on the way out and telling. Yeah, media exactly. That so, um, so that's that's my that's my explanation for that. That would be my guess. Yeah. Um, but the that he didn't have a real social media presence seems odd to me. It seems odd to me that we don't know all kinds of stuff about his parents at this point. Yeah. Um. I mean, I feel like, I, like I haven't gone hunting really for this kind of information, but I feel like it's not generally after a shooting, this would be all over media everywhere. It, it's normally all out there, and it doesn't seem to be. Yeah. Um, this, I mean, we can talk for a moment about just how lucky Donald Trump is. Yeah. <laughs> um, now it, it's, it's close here, but I'm pretty sure watching that video guys shooting from 150 yards away. Yeah. 
Um, you know, Trump turns his head and the bullet hits him. I'm pretty sure that bullet was in the air when Trump <laughs> when, turned his when head. When the head turned, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And if he hadn't turned his head, it would have hit the back of his skull and he would have died. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're not recovering from that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so... So, and it was an AR-15 style rifle, so you're probably yeah. talking 5.56. Five, five, yeah. Which is... which five, is 5.56, five, five, two, 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 three, five, five, six. Yeah, it's going to be one of those two. They're basically the same round. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a pretty small round, yeah. Um, like um say, it does its damage with velocity. Yeah, yeah. Which is the reason that it was able to take his ear off and not his head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it it doesn't do it's not like okay. Um for people that don't know, my father was a firearms instructor. Yeah. I have spent a lot of time on a range shooting a lot of different kinds of of guns. Yeah. yeah. Um it's not like uh, if it had been a 50 cal, yeah. yeah, you know, like, like a 50 cal, it comes that close to you. It probably still kills you. Yeah. Just yeah. The, like the, the air cavitation and everything. It's that it's, round it does damage it. around it where it's pathway, not yeah. just what it hits. Um, that little five, five, six round, it's really only damaging what it hits. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that means that it, it also, though, it means that it didn't just like whiz by and because it was close enough, it did damage. It hit him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it made contact <laughs> with the ear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so it, it's, man, it's kind of amazing how close we w- were to really, I think, the destruction of this nation. Yeah. Cause I'm telling you, if it, if, if he had hit him, we we're in a once again we're in a totally different timeline. Yeah, <laughs> like it's um, things are not okay. <laughs> people on the left should be happy that that bullet didn't didn't kill him. Oh yeah. Um, even those idiots out there that are saying, "Well, I wish you'd had better aim," or like, "Don't man." Yeah. Uh, so I saw uh, Tenacious D canceled their rest of their concert tour, and yeah. Jack Black said that he's not sure that he'll work with Kyle Gass again yeah. after for Kyle Gass's 64th birthday. And I think that they were in Australia, Sydney, I think, but I don't, I don't know. Um, they asked Kyle to make a wish and, uh, his wish was that they not miss Trump next time. Yeah. Which was really disappointing to me. And I understand like this is a comedy group, but dude, (laughs) yeah, that's, that's not funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not like, um, and so like even those idiots out there that are, going crazy and are disappointed in this, you should be thrilled if you care about this nation at all, because if they had succeeded and if I'm going to go with, I don't see how he could be like a lone gunman, but I'm not going into any kind of conspiracy that it was like a government set up at this point. It wouldn't surprise me if we found out that it was, but I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a crazy kid that thought that he was going to rescue the nation by killing <laughs> Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, but I do think that he would have had to have had some help. Yeah. In this. I just don't think that it was a government. They just, yeah. You know. Um, anyway, if, <clears throat> if this bullet had killed Donald Trump, this nation would have devolved into, I don't know what there would definitely have been violence in the streets all over the place though. Yeah. Yeah. And people would have felt like it was, there were a lot of people that would have felt like it was open season. Yeah. 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 And that's not what we, that's not what we want. No. Um, yeah. And those people have a lot of guns by the way. Yeah. (laughs) Like I'm just saying like, it's, it's not like they're just going to go loot a Nike store or something like Mm -hmm. these, these people are toting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, this isn't. Yeah, this would be a whole lot worse than the summer of love a couple of years ago. Yeah, um, I think. I mean, I would like to. I'd like to hope that that's not that wouldn't be the case. But I don't I'm see telling how you, it wouldn't be. I, I don't see how either because and you have a little more. You've seen Trump in at a I'd say rally, but mm-hmm. you you've dealt with his a lot of his hardcore supporters firsthand. Yeah, like and watching the RNC <laughs> this week, just watching like the there's a. And I don't particularly understand it, but there is this like cult following to him that is just like something I haven't seen before. Yeah. Um, um, I, it's, and those people would not just sit, sit back after something like that. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think you would have seen other political assassinations and it would have quickly gotten out of control. Yeah, yeah. No, I, or at I, least assassination attempts. I don't. There would know. be uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> More um, shots would have been fired. That's my point. I think. Yeah. And I, I don't know if if um, there's if the law enforcement would have been capable to reel it in before it got out of control. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could we could really see something <clears throat> where they have to start like locking places down and that mm-hmm. type of thing. Martial like, law. Kind martial of law. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, like, I mean, who knows? Because thankfully we're not in that situation, but it, it could have really gotten dark. Yeah. So. Um, so it also just amazes me that Donald Trump is just like inspector gadget wandering around, like just like <laughs> I, know, somebody like, else made that comparison. Yeah, when I, I don't remember, I heard it somewhere. I think it may have been Dave Smith, but yeah. like it, but it's so, Scott Horton. It could have been Scott Horton because they had a yeah. yeah. It, it was that podcast for <clears throat> sure. But yeah, this guy just wanders around through life, just <laughs> yeah, things falling into place. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's amazing. It's, yeah, it's incredible luck. Um, I, so I was listening to this thing about games, like a, a scientific approach to games. Oh yeah. Um, science and sociocultural, like the values and the you know how to assess them and so forth. Yeah. But one of the people was talking about how um, they had a friend whose husband just had like a feel for games, like understood, you know, saw to the root. I have a friend like this too. Yeah. Um, that just kind of, you play a brand new game with this guy. He's never seen it before. He just like sees through, can to, just move through it. Yeah. To, to what the goal is and how he needs to set that up. Yeah. And he's just really good at games. So this lady was saying that her friend's husband was like this. And the problem was not just that he was good at games, but he was also incredibly lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Things just kind of fall into place. <laughs> and so it just made it impossible <laughs> for them to play games together. Yeah. Um, so they started getting um, cooperative games instead of competitive games. Oh, yeah. that's, that's how they could do it. It's funny. Um, my experience but, is, as I've known people like that, but it tends to like come in shifts where mm-hmm. like they'll have spans where they're just like the stupid lucky and everything falls their way. Mm-hmm. And then they'll have spans where they're just stupid unlucky and just everything falls the other way. Yeah, well, that's how it should work out. Yeah, it, it's mm-hmm. it's just funny that some people get it in those spurts that way, though. Yeah, I, I don't have like a natural ability at games, but I uh, games are experiential to me. Like yeah. if I play a game a few times, then I'll have it figured out. Yeah. But... Um, I'm, I, and I'm not lucky. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. I have to get through on analytical skill. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, so is there anything more you want to say about the truck? I don't really think so. I mean, it's like I say, he's, he definitely, I, I look at him differently now. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll say that. Well, he, he put up. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a good way to put it. Mm. Yep. Um, no, I agree. It, it's the. It's probably really the first time that I've looked at him and thought, "Man, that he's like a real man." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, because <laughs> you really don't know. Like, and just like I was saying earlier, you go through life and you meet people and you think one thing and then see something else when the time comes and yeah. like that's you know, like I've seen what I need to see. <laughs> Speaking of real men, I, I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't. Um, mentioned the guy who was killed, Comparatori, yes. who was killed standing between his family and the bullets. Yeah, that's, yeah. Gets me choked up just thinking about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I'm i happy to see that kind of masculinity out there. Yeah, it like, exists. It's out there. You know. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> no, there's a lot of it out there. There is, yeah. Uh, I, um... I get really frustrated with the with all the talks of toxic masculinity because the yeah. truth is that what what they're talking about most of the time with toxic masculinity is well you got the crazy left wing progressives that what they talk about is toxic masculinity is that kind of thing yeah is, is the you know the protective instinct, et cetera, which yeah. is ridiculous. No, that's just, that's exactly what you want. That's yeah. That's, that's our job. <laughs> this is our role. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, what we do. This is what we bring to the table. <laughs> um, and the, the stuff that really is toxic masculinity, huh. 
men don't like either. Yeah. So there you go. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, men will shout their friends down for the same kind of things that it, the like real toxic masculinity isn't encouraged by men. Yeah. Yeah. Strangely, I think toxic femininity is encouraged by women. So, <laughs> but we can talk about that some other time. That's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did want to talk about the other big news related to Trump. Yeah. This is just a Trump podcast. It sure is. <laughs> Make America great again. <laughs> um, is uh, he, his uh, vice presidential selection. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, J.D. Vance, senator from Ohio. Uh, I think he's first term senator from Ohio. He is junior senator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't like that term. <laughs> well, it's, it's what he is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I don't but like that, that term. But that, that encourages them to, be... to stay there forever, right? Well, no, it, it makes it think, it, it gives the impression that there's some kind of ranking. Yeah. Um, when the truth is that both of those senators have an equal vote. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> like, one of them hadn't been there as long. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't, that's not the point. I, yeah. The whole senior junior thing, cause they try and use that to keep younger senators in their place essentially yeah. to keep them from doing uh, stuff, doing stuff. Yes. Yeah. No, or rocking the boat. Oh yeah. That's and true. That's one thing. That and that's I, the whole reason a lot of them are there is to rock the boat. Yeah. And that's what they need to be doing. Exactly. So. Um, and this guy's no exception as far as I can tell. Yeah. Now, there's I, I keep finding a bunch of things that I disagree with him about. Yeah. But um, he does seem to be legitimately concerned with the welfare of middle class Americans. Yeah. And um, I found a a not very old speech that he gave to the Quincy Institute. Yeah. Um, and it's the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft. It's a uh, a bipartisan or nonpartisan it kind of depends on who you ask it was i think it was originally set up by uh the the cokes and the um who's the left-wing guy that every uh, soros soros yeah. i think it was originally set up by the cokes and soros together okay um but it's a it, i'm gonna say nonpartisan um yeah. foreign policy think tank okay that's generally for um non-interventionism Generally, I mean, not entirely, but they got a bunch of people writing for them and, and doing their thinking, I guess, yeah, that yeah. I do uh, have a lot of respect for, like Kelly Vallejos. Um, there's another guy whose name escapes me right now. I got a couple of his books on my bookshelves, though. Like, yeah, there's some there's some good people there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he gave a speech uh, there. I think it's just a few months ago. Yeah. That I listened to. Um there were things that I liked and things that I don't like. I, I think that, um, he's good on Ukraine. Yep. He, um, his, he's very critical of, um, the neoconservative foreign policy generally. Yeah. Definitely appreciate that. Yeah. Um, he, uh, as far as the Ukraine thing, he's, he does it from a very realist perspective and he tries to approach all of this as like a, a realist foreign policy guy like Mearsheimer. Yeah. I don't think he's quite as clever as Mearsheimer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, with Ukraine, he's talking about, you know, that we're creating another dependent state, mm -hmm. essentially, that um, we're uh, encouraging the complete destruction of that country um, and we're doing it at taxpayer expense. And then when the when they finally sign the treaty and end the fighting, then um, at taxpayer expense again, we're going to pay a whole bunch of corporations to go in there and to rebuild it because rebuild they it. can't yep. do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that this will be a huge drain on America um, and be a, a real drain, particularly for middle class Americans. Yeah. And I, I think he's absolutely right about all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, However, uh, he is on board with um, supporting Israel's war in Gaza. Yep. It's hard to be a Republican in this country and not be, honestly. Yeah. I mean, to be fair. Yeah. But he talks about um, that the foreign policy needs to be based on the morality of your average American. And one of his big arguments as to why we should be involved in... Uh, Israel supporting Israel in that way 
is that um, this is uh, the largest majority Christian nation in the world, and that that's where Jesus was. Yeah. And so it's important to Americans. <laughs> that's just a tough sell for me. Yeah. Even me as a Christian, that's a tough sell. Well, the other part of that is that he keeps saying, you know, one of the things, the mistakes that we've made in the Middle East all this time is that our activity keeps resulting in the um, destruction of old Christian communities. Yeah. He's talking about like, you know, like the Kurds and things like that. Yeah. All right. Um, and he's right. Like, yeah. it, that's absolutely true that our interventions in Syria and in Iraq and all over keep resulting in the destruction of Christian communities. What he doesn't seem to know, apparently, yeah. in his uh, in his desire to support Israel in their um, destruction of Hamas, which necessarily means the destruction of Gaza, yeah. is that Gaza is home to four hundred thousand Christians. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they're kind of <laughs> we're doing it again. <laughs> yeah. Except it's with our bombs, literally this time. Yeah. So I, I don't understand this argument and then to say, so we should support the Jews as they kill more Christians. Yeah. Um, that doesn't make any sense to me. He did try to make a realist argument for um, supporting Israel. Parts of it, I think that he made a fair argument. So yeah. I don't agree, but I understand this perspective. Um, one of the things that he was saying is that in a defensive war— Missile defense is a really important resource. And but you can't maintain a defensive war in today's on today's battlefield because the missiles cost so much less than the missile defense. Oh yeah. Right. So you can't you can't maintain a defensive war this way. Yeah. Um, because it's just a drain on the defensive state. And yeah. that Israel is on the leading edge of missile defense, that they have effective and uh inexpensive and they're pushing to be more and more inexpensive all the time, missile defense. And so having that as a strategic partner is yeah. valuable to the United States if we ever fought defensive wars. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's one of the problems with this argument yeah. there is that we are that's always the, on offense. Yeah, we're the offensive guys. <laughs> uh, but I do understand that point. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not an unreasonable point. But then he goes on to say, this. But I actually think that Washington, at least current Washington leadership, really likes the fact that the Europeans are completely dependent on us. That's not an al alliance. These people aren't increasingly allies. They are client states of the United States of America who do whatever we want them to do. Well, I think we have a real opportunity to ensure that Israel is an ally in the true sense, that it's going to pursue their interests, and sometimes those interests won't totally overlap with the United States, and that's totally reasonable, but they are fundamentally self-sufficient. And I think the way that we get there in Israel is actually by combining the Abraham Accords approach with the defeat of Hamas that gets us to a place where Israel and the Sunni nations can play a regional counterweight to Iran. Again, we don't want a broader regional war. We don't want to get involved in a broader regional war. The best way to do that is to ensure that Israel with the Sunni nations can actually police their own region of the world. And that allows us to spend less time and less resources on the Middle East and focus more on East Asia. Okay. So again, I understand this argument. Like, oh, it would be nice to have an ally that was a self-sufficient ally that wasn't a client state, that didn't just require American resources to survive. Yeah. But he seems to be missing some things here. Um, first of all, the Sunnis are the ones that attacked us on 9-11. Yeah. All right. He's talking about allying with the people that made up ISIS and Al-Qaeda to be a counterweight against Iran. Yeah. Who hasn't attacked us. Yeah. At least not since we left their country. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, well, they sure is... I mean, they they do sponsor some terrorism in their region, but they haven't come over here and attacked us like the Sunnis did. Yeah. Uh, so I I don't understand. This has been a really common thing since we um, since we fought in Iraq the second time, 
and uh, overthrew the Sunni government of Iraq and realized that we just handed over Iraq to Iran. Yeah. That this strategic shift to support the Sunnis, to support Al-Qaeda and ISIS, this is one of those complaints that we've had again since the beginning of the podcast that we've tried to get people to understand over and over the history of this, is that we keep allying with the people that attacked us on 9-11. Yeah. And this is another attempt to ally with the people that attacked us on 9-11. Well, actually, he's trying to get Israel to ally with the people that attacked us on (laughs) 9-11. There are some theories out there that said that they already did, but (laughs) I don't subscribe to that. Uh, And then, of course, the end of it, so that we can focus on a war with China. I mean, he didn't say that. But that's what the implication is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So he is a bit of a China hawk. Um, yeah, he yeah. Uh, he is concerned now from his perspective, it does seem to be about a concern for again for middle class Americans, but he's willing to fight an economic war with China to um, get some. Uh, all right. And so there's parts of this that, again, I agree with him. I think that we need to do more manufacturing, more industrial stuff in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, but the answer isn't to fight an economic war with China. The answer is to get the government out of the way of the market and let the market do its thing. Yeah, absolutely. And we are going to lose jobs overseas because uh, of labor costs. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. But what you're talking about with an economic war, and I I think it was actually, um, oh gosh, I can't think of his name. He he ran for uh, the... um, the uh, libertarian nomination for president in um, 2016. Uh, the young guy. Oh. Um, that was oh Austin Peterson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Peterson. I th- I'm pretty sure it was Peterson that I was listening to years and years ago, and he was talking about that uh, a sanctions war, an economic war, is a lot like saying, "Okay, well, if you do that, we're going to kill 10 percent of our population." <laughs> And the response being, well, if you kill 10% of your population, we're going to kill 15% of our population. Yeah. Oh, if you're going to kill 15% of your population, then we'll kill 20% of our population. Yeah. That's Just, about the substance of an economic war. Yeah. Um, what you're talking about is you're cutting off a, a, an input of resources Yeah. so that you can generate jobs for a few people higher wages for a few people people and higher prices for everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's not a good trade. No. Um I mean if if you want to to bolster and 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 build manufacturing in this country, the way to do it isn't through an economic war with China. Mm-hmm. The way to do it is just like what you just said, is pull back on some of these regulations that are that are hamstringing these, com- these companies from doing stuff here. Yeah. There's plenty of companies that, even though they may pay a little more in labor, would still rather do business in the U.S. if they didn't have to fight the government every step of the way. Exactly. Get the government out of the way and let these companies do business. Yes, um, yeah. And there's there's a boom to be had there. Mm-hmm. Um, like I say, if the right politician, the right president stepped in and make some of those moves, like there's a boom to be had. Yeah. But it's you're not we're not going to win this through an economic war. Yeah. Like that's just not the that's not the strategy that should be being put put, put mm-hmm. forth. And he's talking about how in the 70s and the 80s, and this is all the from the speech at the Quincy Institute. I found this speech. Fascinating, by the way. Yeah. Um, I, well, I may go check it out. I yeah. listened to his one last night. and I mean, he's he's yeah. a good speaker. He's yeah. definitely interesting. <laughs> it, well, that, his one from the RNC, I listened to it today. It made me wish that his, his Meemaw was still alive. That <laughs> she was the vice presidential <laughs> candidate instead. Yeah. Uh, that sounded like an awesome woman. Yeah. Um, but uh, <clears throat> he he's talking about how in the 70s and 80s when the U.S. was, uh, was promoting... Chinese industrialization yeah. um, that they said, you know, that we'll, we'll industrialize China and uh, we'll help them convert to a Western democracy. Well, obviously th- we ended up with the worst of the worlds. Like we exported a bunch of manufacturing jobs to China yeah, and they didn't become a Western democracy. No. <laughs> now I don't know. That's not the end of the story as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I maintain my theory that 
we will see a another cultural revolution in China because yeah. you can't loosen up, you, you can't liberalize your economy, um, and not have social and political liberalization follow at some point. Yeah. I mean, China's done a good job of keeping it locked down up till now to keeping centralized power, but you've given a bunch of people a taste of what entrepreneurship and, and economic freedom can do for them. Yeah. And at some point they're going to, as they feel less and less dependent on their government, then yeah. they're going to push for more and more liberalization of the, of the politics as well. And especially at that point, if the Chinese government tries to lock things down again, after people have already gotten that taste, yeah. it's, it's not going to go gonna, well. Yeah. It's not going to work. So I, I'm not I'm not really concerned about China. Yeah. I think in the coming decades we're going to see another cultural revolution in China and probably civil war, not war with us. Yeah, if we can stay out of war with them that long. <laughs> yeah, if um, we can get that far. That's because they, they'll suffer from the same thing we do as far as the rally around the flag. Yeah, like if we spur this on and, and go to war with them too soon, mm-hmm. it, that all of that can be lost. Yeah, we can't win a war with China. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean. There's- they might lose, but we will too. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think that, I, don't, I think this is a no winner war. Yeah. If we, if we ever go to war with China, it's a no win war. Uh, everybody's going to lose. Well, it, um, any, any nuclear powered country. Well, that, I yeah, mean, that's, that's generally, but even if it doesn't go nuclear. Yeah. But it, what are the odds, man? Yeah. I mean, if, if it goes hot, I, it's only a matter of time before it goes nuclear. Yeah. The problem is that there's no such thing as limited nuclear war. Well, that's just it. Right? As you, soon as you a go nuke goes off, everybody's gone. Yeah. yeah it, as soon as a nuke goes off, everybody fires everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's just what happens. Um, but uh, I, I don't, I'm not concerned about them as, I don't worry about them being economic rival because I don't care. Yeah. It actually yeah. benefits us. Well, and, yeah. And even like the idea of going to war with China is so ridiculous anyway because a whole bunch of our um, military contractors are dependent on materials from China. Right. <laughs> we need like, them to build I, the bombs. I think I, I read somewhere along the way that if Raytheon couldn't get materials from China, they would just have to shut down. <laughs> so Well, well there would like, be a silver lining. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, but that seems like a bad plan is it to is. go to war with a country whose materials you're dependent on for your own war making capability. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. I don't it know. just goes to show how well these people think things through. Yeah. Um, all in all, though, I I like that. Now, there's there's some ideas out there that Trump may have picked him after the assassination attempt to make it less likely that they try and kill him again. <laughs> yeah. um, because a lot of people don't like yeah. uh, J.D. Vance. Um, yeah. I So I don't agree with him on a lot of things, but I do appreciate that he seems to be morally uncompromising. Yeah. Uh, I have respect for people that have um, a principle... And stick to it. Yeah. Especially in politics, because you don't see there that. There ain't a lot, a lot of that, yeah. Uh, and he seems to be one of those people. And he, he isn't a mainstream figure. He is not a Pence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah. <laughs> it was always astonishing to me that he picked Pence of all people. Yeah. This um, is a guy who's willing to rock the boat, and I like that Trump picked another guy who's willing to rock the boat. Yeah. Um, I, I, th- I hope that that's a sign that what they've been telling us all this time about his inability to, to, uh, hire the right people will be different this time. Yeah. Um, that we won't see more Boltons and Pompeo's and bars that we'll see some people that are, are willing to kind of upturn things. Yeah. Um, that that's, gives me hope for a Trump presidency also. Yeah. I still don't really want a Trump presidency, but if we're going to have a Trump presidency, that's the kind of Trump presidency I want. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. And another thing that I found in this, this is just a side note, maybe to close things out. Um, cause we're over an hour. Uh, I, I actually wondered if we would fill time today. I almost said that at the beginning, but then <laughs> well, I was like, why even say it? Cause I know that we'll talk enough to, yeah. in the end, we talk about snails for an hour. Yeah. Um, But when I talk to people about issues with Trump or issues with Biden or issues with Putin or issues with J.D. Vance or any anything else, I'm just I guess what I'm finding is that I'm kind of amazed at the power of the media. And when we saw things after the Trump assassination attempt, like um, 
Trump injured after fall at rally yeah. or Trump rushed off, rushed off stage after after, incident. after noise. Yeah, <laughs> like I, that was one of the CNN headlines yeah. after loud noise at Trump rally, Trump rushed off stage. Yeah. It's like they, they, they shot his ear off people. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and that there are still people now, this isn't the media, but that there's still people out there saying that they think that it was like a false flag. again. Well, guy, a guy died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like this is not yeah. some kind of stage thing. I, I don't know. Um, but what I've been amazed at is just the power of the mainstream media that when I ask people, you know, why don't you like JD Vance? Well, his policies and his positions on a whole bunch of things. Okay. Like what? Yeah. yeah, That's all you get. (laughs) All all you got was, (laughs) yeah, Uh, no, no examples. Yeah. Yeah. They have no, and this is what I was realizing is that you don't get information from mainstream media. You get told how to think. Yeah. Yeah, and depending on which side of the aisle you're on, de- determines where you get the me- where the you get the media to know how to think. Yeah, and and actually, I misspoke there. Not how to think, what to think. Yeah, yeah, that's that's more correct. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, you you don't get told what to think about. You get told what to think. Yeah, yeah. And you get told what your opinion is. Yeah. Um. And I, I'm just. That really bothers me. I, I don't know how to explain <laughs> well, like the, how much that the, bothers me because I go seeking information and I don't I don't do mainstream media very much. Um, and I, I say that in the sense that I don't watch CNN or Fox or NBC or any of those. I, I, and if I'm going to watch any of them, NBC is the one that I feel has the least amount of ties to things that I don't yeah. like. Um, but I have maintained for many, many years that if you want to find out anything, you have to read your news. Yeah. No, that's 100% true. You have to read it, not watch it. Yeah. And you um, can get good information out of a CNN article that yeah. you read, but you don't get anything out of any of their TV stuff. No. Um, I mean, basically all you're getting, and I do watch a fair amount of mainstream media just because I want to know what the propaganda is this week. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what are, what do they want me to believe now? Yeah. Um, and I get a lot of that out of no agenda, so I don't have to watch yeah. all that stuff myself. Yeah. I watch. I'll, <laughs> yeah. And it, it's amazing how much I'll watch something. And then like when the no agenda comes out, it's on the no agenda. It's like, ah, oh, I saw that out in yeah. the wild. <laughs> yeah. So I was screaming at the TV when they said it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so people, I, you can always come here. Well, uh, that's mean, well, what I was going to say, though. That's the the good news is is that the mainstream media is becoming exactly it's becoming the legacy media. It's not it's not the go to. It's not the the main event anymore. Most people get their news from from other sources other than the mainstream. Mm-hmm. Some of those other sources ain't that great. Yeah. Like I'm amazed of the amount of people that get their news from TikTok. Um, <laughs> yeah. like that's, that's a thing. And I'm mm-hmm. not even saying that's necessarily the worst thing, but it's not the best. <laughs> yeah. But, but podcasts, there's a lot of good podcasts. I feel like we do one, but there's a tons of other ones. Yeah. Variety um, is important. Um, yeah. so, you know, if you get your m- news from TikTok, watch everybody's version of whatever it is that you're looking at. Again, you might get a kind of roundish picture. At least you can start piecing together the things that are consistent. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. Like that are verifiably consistent, like the facts that are consistent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, so. uh, when I but get even, into these things, usually like I read every article I can find. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I have some trusted sources of my own Yeah. that I go to, but like when I really get into a topic, I read every, every article I can every find. Every angle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and then I try and report it as best I can here. Yeah. So it's all for you guys. <laughs> That's right. I swear I wouldn't read all that stuff if it weren't from this podcast. <laughs> yeah. It's probably not true. Uh, but um because I'm addicted. Yeah. Um, but you know, we'll uh we'll be back next week. Yeah. Uh in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can I hope you're okay with me closing here at <laughs> no, any chance for a final word. No, we're good. Um uh you can follow us on Facebook, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe. You can always um, email me at michael at thelibertymike.com. Uh, you can leave reviews in several of those places. 
I think. Uh, we're still on YouTube. Oh, um, one of our listeners asked if we were on Rumble. The answer is no. Oh, uh, no Rumble yet. No we're Rumble. Not, we're not rumbling. We we well, we don't have very many people that that watch us on YouTube. Yeah, that that's like the smallest group of people that we have is YouTube. Yeah. Um, I I put the podcast on YouTube actually because this guy who asked yeah. um, asked if we could start putting stuff on YouTube because that was the most convenient thing for him. Yeah. Um, what is, I don't even know what Rumble is. Rumble is an alternative YouTube. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, it, there's some evidence to suggest that they're a little freer in what they allow. I okay. mean, well, they're definitely freer in what they allow. Like, yeah. we wouldn't have had, uh, you know, half a Strikes dozen... against us. Yeah. Um, yeah, episodes pulled for medical misinformation during <laughs> COVID uh, at Rumble, probably. Um, I don't know. I'll look into it. If it's something that I can very easily just, like, add to the list of things that I do when we're done, then then yeah. maybe I'll start putting it up there. But then I feel like I have to put up everything that we've done so far. That's 220-something episodes. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work. It does, doesn't it? Uh, That's what I'll I have to thinking. check out Rumble. I've heard of Rumble, but I had no clue what it is. I've never used it or anything like that. Maybe I'll check it out. Yeah. Well, what I what I can tell you is that I can still watch RT on Rumble. Oh, nice. And so, I can't so, on YouTube. So you can get you some Russian propaganda. On. Exactly. <laughs> RT News is not it's less so less bad. propagandic than U.S. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, hey. You know, you, you know that they're. The yeah. truth is that there's enough bad things to say about things that are going on in the U.S. that they don't have to make stuff up. They don't have to make it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They yeah. just have to report. <laughs> um, and I'm, you know, they probably propagandize for Russians in the same way that the U.S. media propagandizes for in the U.S. But yeah, I don't care what's going on in Russia so much. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm, I'm more interested in the international news, and I have found that I can't trust... The U- it's better to get an outside perspective on international news, especially what the U.S. is doing. So yeah. the ones that I have depended on for years and years have been France 24 and RT. Yeah. Um, I used to watch Deutsche Welle, but it got really fluffy. Yeah. I, so that's one I, I used to spend some time with, but I less now than yeah. I used to. Um, I watched some uh, Sky News Australia, not because I think it's good news very particularly but it's funny oh yeah. yeah yeah um they they've been really critical in a very funny way of like biden and some u.s policy stuff and so forth and american media and yeah. so i i've watched little clips from sky news because they make me laugh right okay. um and that's what it's all about yeah <laughs> really <laughs> all right so uh yeah um we'll be back next week when we finally get this right and in the meantime try to stay free life short live free ciao later